The next item of business is a motion from the Committee for the Environment. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour thirty minutes for this debate. The proposer will have ten minutes to propose the motion and ten minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Clark, please read the motion. That this Assembly notes the report of the Committee for the Environment's stakeholder event on river pollution, NIA 318-11-16, and calls on the Minister of the Environment to work with his executive colleagues and stakeholders to take forward actions to address issues identified in the report in relation to fully implementing existing legislation, addressing the causes of pollution, monitoring pollution and enforcement. I call the chairperson of the Committee for the Environment, Ms Anna Lowe, to move the motion. Thank you, Mr Principal. De uh, Deputy Speaker, I beg to move. Uh, on behalf of the Committee for the Environment, I am delighted to open the debate on this important issue of water pollution. Our water environment is so important to our daily lives. We use it as a source of drinking water. It is used by agriculture and industry. It sustains our precious marine life and is used by many of us for various recreational activities. Everyone has a responsibility to ensure our rivers and lakes are protected and we are all affected by it. The committee first started looking at pollution incidents back in April following frequent reports of fish kill. Statistics show that since the implementation of the Water Framework Directive in 2009, there has not been a significant decline in the number of pollution incidents. This is surprising, as the purpose of the directive is to establish long-term objectives for water protection for our sur uh, surface, coastal and ground waters. The committee recognized the merits of undertaking a full inquiry into this topic, but agreed that it could not complete an inquiry in the remaining months of the mandate. However, it felt that it was important to highlight key issues. To that end, the committee took oral evidence from the Freshwater Task Force and the Ulster Angler Federation. It commissions research looking at causes and monitoring systems and preventative measures. The committee held a stakeholder event on 18 February 2016. 18 organizations took part, including NIEA, who contributed and responded to the discussions. The event explored issues of pollution management under the following four themes. Impact of legislation, pollution causes, monitoring and enforcement. Firstly, the committee considered the impact that the legislation, legislation has had. The committee heard views that river basin management plans have failed to restore our lakes and rivers, and that there is not sufficient resources or funding to deliver its targets. It is hoped that the restructuring of government departments will provide an opportunity to adopt a more streamlined approach to tackling pollution and reduce duplication across agencies. It was clear that there are very real concerns that the level of fines and penalties imposed do not act as a deterrent. Would the uh, give way? Yes, surely. <coughs> yes. I'm very grateful to the member given way. Would the member agree with me that the uh, ever increasing number of pollution incidents would be better monitored and indeed policed by an independent environmental agency rather than what we've got at the moment? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, grateful for, uh, to the member for bringing that forward and certainly, as you know, uh, our party and, and I myself are very, uh, very uh, certainly enthusiastic about an independent EPA. Uh, so uh, um, it was clear that there are very real concerns that the level of fines and penalties imposed do not act as a deterrent and are not reflective of the severity of the crime 
more work is required in this area. The committee heard that better interaction with the planning system and engagement with the strategic planning policy is vital. Discharge consents do not form part of the planning application, and concerns were expressed that there are locations when there is insufficient infrastructure in place to support the planning application. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the committee heard that there are three main sources of pollution – agriculture, industry and domestic pollution. Stakeholders suggest that cross-compliance requirements attached to single farm payments could prevent pollution from ACRI sources and that the farm advisory system could help to secure buy-in from farmers and inform them on legislative compliance. Views were expressed that more regulation is required of industry as often the nature of material that is polluted can be toxic. There was recognition that the government agencies have made improvements to address issues caused by underinvestment, with large improvements made in sewage collection treatment. However, more work is required. For example, the committee heard that funding must continue to be provided to enable the ongoing upgrade of wastewater treatment works. Also, the committee heard that smaller sewage treatment works still fail to meet modern standards, and poorly maintained septic tanks are causing considerable damage. Statistics show that pollution causes from unknown sources is increasing. Domestic pollution is also recognized as a problem. Therefore, improving education and raising awareness among the general public is considered important, as many individuals do not realize the impact of their actions. The benefits of educating children at school was acknowledged and welcomed. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the committee also looked at how pollution is monitored. The two main avenues for detection are incidents discovered through NIEA's ongoing work and incidents reported to NIEA. The committee heard that there is a need for better quality monitoring and access to better data to fully understand river systems. The reliance on the public to report incidents was huge and the committee heard that there should be schemes to engage and encourage the public with warning signs in place to deter polluters. Lastly, views were expressed that the current enforcement framework is not effective and that a joined up approach is required. The principle that the polluter must pay was also popular. Enforcement represents a failure of the process and should only be used as a last resort. The need for education and behavioural change in society and across the business sector would lessen the need for enforcement and might prevent pollution rather than penalise those found to have polluted our waters. Mr Deputy Speaker, the work that the committee undertook in the short time certainly gave it food for thought and reinforced the committee's view that analysis is required in this area. It is the committee's intention this afternoon to highlight some of these issues, and it does not wish to dissuade a future committee from considering this matter in depth. In fact, the committee would encourage an incoming committee to undertake a more detailed analysis of these issues. A holistic approach is required to tackle these complex but devastating incidents. That is why the committee has called on the minister to work with his executive colleagues and key stakeholders to step up efforts to deliver outcomes that will impact directly on our water quality management. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would like to conclude by thanking all of the stakeholders stakeholders for participating in the stakeholder event and giving evidence to the committee. I wish also to thank the officials from NIEA who attended and very ably 
responded to the many and sometimes difficult questions. The committee hopes that by debating these issues this afternoon, it raises the profile of this particular issue and that as we move into the new mandate, more uh, can and will be done to reduce pollution in our rivers and lakes. Uh, that concludes my remark as chairperson of the Environment Committee. I would like now to say a few words uh, on behalf of the Alliance Party. Uh, I'm glad that we managed at least to initiate consideration on the issue of river pollution, given the heavy workload the committee had in the last few months, coming to the end of the mandate. However, I hope we have made a good start to raise concerns expressed, particularly by a number of committee members whose constituencies have had frequent experiences of fish kill. Such concerns were also echoed by participants in the stakeholder event. I do think the new Department for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs will have Remember greater time. capacity to address this uh, cross-cutting issue more comprehensively Remember than time. by the OELO. Thank you. I call Paul Gervin. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, I think this is a very, was a very timely uh, report, and uh, to, be, to, bring, to bring it back to the, the, the crux of the matter, came on the back of a number of incidents that have happened where we've had, we have had major pollution incidents within our watercourse, uh, a lot of which feeds its way into Loch Ness, which uh, a lot of us get our drinking water from, never mind anything else. So, uh, as a consequence of uh, any pollution which makes its way into the river, ultimately can make its way into what we uh, drink. Uh, having attended the stakeholder event uh, at Oxford Island, uh, I thought it was an extremely, uh, an extremely informative event. Uh, a number of areas that did come out, and I think that this is where the joined up approach between departments uh, became an issue, uh, where we had uh, some areas where the Department of Agriculture were responsible for, somewhere the Department of Culture, Leisure and Art, or Arts and Leisure had an involvement, and then there was the Department of the Environment. I think that uh, there's a, this is a, an opportunity for us to move forward uh, with a, a positive approach to having a joined up uh, approach to dealing with what is uh, to, to, uh, combating pollution on our river courses. Uh, I do think that we have uh, a great wealth of experience within the voluntary and the, the sporting sector within our community. They have probably a first line uh, of contact in making sure that they know whenever uh, pollution has happened uh, and identifying it and feeding that in. So, you know, it's important to actually capitalise upon what is a great resource. And the angling community in particular, who would be on the rivers, probably regularly, not always fishing, I might say, but observing what is going on uh, and would be the first people probably to identify whenever something has happened. But it was interesting to note that we do have uh, a number of sewage treatment works which probably are not always uh, able to handle the volume that they were designed for. Uh, and as development has went on, we have uh, sewage treatment works which are run by the Department uh, of uh, regional development, uh, unfortunately, sometimes being the cause of pollution in some of our water courses. Uh, and as a consequence of that, I think it's vitally important that uh, we now get that all under one umbrella to deal with that approach and ensure that uh, they do not uh, breach that. Appreciate that at times of flood, it can sometimes be difficult to cope with it. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, there is a certain amount of overflow that makes its way into the, the river system at that time. Uh, probably the only redeeming factor is that the river is on flood, and as, as a consequence, the dilution factor is quite high. An area which, uh, we had, which the group that I was uh, involved with had concerns over was in relation to, and it's part of the report, was in relation to uh, the inconsistencies that there seems to be within prosecution. And those who have been uh, found guilty of being uh, the cause of major pollution incidents, there seems to be uh, less than a, a, a fair approach towards it. Sometimes, depending on who is in the court at that time, if he's at some involvement in, in, fishery, in fishing, he can take a very, very hard and 
put, for, put forward a, a penalty to the individual concerned, uh, but uh, depending on who, if it's somebody else that was up who maybe didn't have the same interest, there seemed to be a, a, a more lenient approach. So therefore, there seemed to be inconsistencies. And those who were perpetrating and had been involved in a number of incidents didn't seem to be getting treated any more, uh, uh, with any more uh, uh, force from the law. And I felt it was vitally important that something should be done on that. One of, the, one of the suggestions that came forward from our group was in relation to putting forward a, a, a three-strike rule and a fixed penalty approach towards minor incidents where they could be dealt with on a fixed penalty with a potential for retribution uh, or for, uh, to actually rectify the problem that had been caused, either to restock a river or to actually uh, 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 clean uh, the river banks and such like. Another area that was concerned about was those who have been involved in identifying that a pollution incident has happened, it is more important to ensure that livestock and animals which are drinking from that water course are held back and not allowed to drink from water which is polluted uh, and therefore added into the food chain. Member uh, so, to close. so there needs to be a mechanism to do that. But I think it was a very worthwhile event and I think the report was really timely. Thank you. I call Barry Mickledoff. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker Gorham Elgott. Uh, I'll ask Ken uh, Like the previous speakers, uh, I want to acknowledge that the committee's look at the causes of river pollution has been a short focused exercise. Um, in a way, it's inviting greater work, a greater investigation on the part of uh, the statutory committee, which might take on the role uh, in the new mandate. Uh, obviously, we'll have the reconfiguration of departments and the reconfiguration of statutory committees, but certainly uh, the statutory committee, which will look at environment and rural affairs and agriculture, uh, may wish to take a fuller look at uh, the work of the committee, which came late in the day, but uh, I would have to attribute uh, the initiative, uh, Deputy Speaker, to the member for South Antrim, uh, Pam Cameron. It was uh, at her suggestion, at her proposal, uh, that we undertook this look, and uh, as Mr. Gervin has said, it was a worthwhile exercise. But uh, I'm uh, happy to attribute uh, the initiative in this uh, to both the chair, Anna Lowe, and to Pam Cameron, who drove this agenda. Um, and uh, they did us all a service by doing so. Um, we all have constituency interests, and uh, from a West Tyrone point of view, I would be very interested in the story of the River Strule and fish kills in recent years. Um, how many uh, fish kills have there been, for example, in the last five to 10 years uh, on the River Strule? And what have been the main causes of pollution? And a cursory look would suggest to you that, okay, the main causes are agricultural, industrial, and domestic, but uh, government departments are in there too. And uh, I would wonder how many of the fish kills on the River Strule might be attributable to uh, sewage treatment works and to the Department of Regional Development, uh, NA Water, etc. Another question I would pose, uh, it's very current, it's very relevant in the here and now, would relate to the River Owen Killew in mid Tyrone. And uh, with the proposed uh, location and development, of a cyanide processing plant in that, in that part of the world, what impact would that have on the special area of conservation, on the freshwater pearl mussels in the river Owen Killew? It's my understanding that there is a minimum number of 10,000 freshwater pearl mussels confined to a four kilometre stretch of undistur undisturbed river channel in the Owen Killew River and certainly local people, uh, local anglers, local environmentalists or local people have been raising this issue with me. And uh, that would be my questions to the Minister. Uh, I can't imagine that he would have the specific detail to hand, or, or perhaps he will. But uh, at this stage too, as you know, this mandate is drawing towards a close, I would like to record my appreciation to the Chair of the Environment Committee and uh, the Secretariat of the Environment Committee and indeed our Deputy Chair Pam who took this initiative uh, to wish Anna 
low every success in the future. She could make a late intervention yet. The nominations have not yet closed. She could do a, a Healy Ray on us. <laughs> but, but also, but also, also to wish another distinguished member of our committee well into the future, namely young Alban McGuinness from North Belfast. Okay, that'll do me. Thanks very much. And I now call young Alban McGuinness. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chair. Thank you for these plaudits. Um, could I say this is international? It, it's not because it's International Women's Day uh, that I mention uh, our esteemed Chair, Anna Lowe, and our esteemed Deputy Chair, uh, Pam Cameron. Um, it's because they've made uh, a, a very valuable contribution uh, to the committee, Anna, in terms of her leadership of the committee. Uh, and Pan Cameron in terms of um, this particular debate which she has raised uh, consistently uh, and uh, I uh, have to say that um, uh, as a result of her good work uh, we have this report today and it's an important report, it's a timely report as her colleague has pointed out uh, and uh, it's important for us here in the north of Ireland to get our waterways, our rivers, uh, clean and unpolluted. It's uh, important because it adds to our uh, natural environment. It also adds to our tourism uh, offering. It adds just simply to uh, the well-being of our citizens, so it's important. Um, uh, could I make uh, a, political a party political point in, in this sense, a partisan political point? Uh, the, a lot of the good work that has gone on in relation to river pollution is a result of the European Union, dare I mention it. I see I've wakened Mr. Alistair. <laughs> I'm delighted that he's alive and well and alert. And I refer, of course, to the Water Framework Directive, uh, which, of course, I, he may well have had a part in, in, in constructing. In, in Europe, <laughs> he voted against it. There you are. But despite his vote against it, we have it here, and uh, it is added uh, to the weaponry of the Department of the Environment in dealing with pollution. So there you are. Uh, just despite Mr. Alistair's best efforts, he was thwarted, and we now have this uh, wonderful uh, framework directive. Uh, from which flows uh, the, the great benefit of legislative uh, uh, control and so forth. And I, I have to say that uh, uh, the, 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 there is another political point I would make, and that is this. The, the new department will be the Department of Agriculture and uh, the Environment. Um, uh, I, I think that's the new name. It might just be agriculture by itself, but nonetheless, the point is this, there will be a tension. Uh, oh yes, indeed, yes. It's very important uh, for a city slicker like yourself to understand that uh, rural affairs is in there as well. <laughs> the members next to minute. Very good. I, I, I'm advised and I accept that advice uh, from a very distinguished member, a long-standing member of the committee. But uh, could, could I say that there is a tension between the environment and agriculture and uh, to wit, to wit uh, the, uh, uh, in Northern Ireland, around 68% of failures are due to diffuse um, agricultural uh, uh, pollution. 33% uh, in fact are due to uh, discharges from wastewater treatment works, industry, sewage networks, etc., etc. Uh, but the, the important point is that there is this tension between agriculture and the environment, and we have got to get that right. And I think the best way of getting that right is having an independent environmental agency. So that's another uh, position that I put forward. I, I'm not sure whether Mr. Alistair agrees with that one or not. Uh, no, he's, uh, he doesn't agree with that either. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it would be an important thing to have and would help us in terms of dealing with uh, water pollution and, and the pollution of our rivers, which are so uh, important to us. Uh, and uh, could I, uh, 
say then that it, it's important that we continue this good work which the Environment Committee has done. Uh, the Environment Committee met with stakeholders. I was unable to get to that event, but nonetheless, it went ahead. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and apparently, it was a very successful event too, uh, despite my absence, uh, or maybe because of my absence. <laughs> so uh, it, it was a good event, and uh, credit to the committee for that. And I think the stakeholders were uh, delighted to have an input at that level, and that's important because it's a partnership that we need to be building, a partnership between government and the stakeholders and indeed this assembly, and that, I think that's very, very important. One final point, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, is this, Deputy Speaker, uh, that in terms of fines and enforcement, I think the courts need to take uh, pollution incidents much more seriously. Uh, I know we can advise people, I know we can prevent pollution, but you know there is a deterrent effect uh, if uh, there are high monetary penalties. And I would encourage the committee and the department uh, to say to Can the judiciary, remarks, look, it's important that these offences are marked out for what they are and that the polluter truly pays in monetary terms. I call Alistair Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on this report. Of course, I was not a member of the House in November, never mind a member of the Environment Committee, when the discussions on these issues began. I was, unfortunately, unable to attend the stakeholder event in February. However, having read the report, it was certainly wide-ranging, covering all the issues ranging from the causes of pollution to the legislation surrounding it. A substantial proportion of Northern Ireland's water bodies within each of the river basin districts are already classed as being in relatively good status. However, there are a couple of areas, such as Loch Ney and the tributaries that surround it, that are some of the most polluted waterways in Europe. That, of course, is deeply worrying, and therefore, it is an obvious area where the Department as well as the committee need to focus upon. In addition, there are too many reports of rivers, often the same ones, being polluted and resulting in all levels of fish kills. The ecological damage of these incidents can be devastating and can leave a lasting legacy. It is frustrating to hear about certain rivers being repeatedly polluted when it is obvious that a single site or business is responsible. We need to remember that most pollution incidents are avoidable. Careful planning to prevent pollution costs very little. However, the costs of cleaning up pollution incidents can be significant. The sources of river pollution, as the committee heard, are varied, and I know other members have referred to sewage treatment plants. I'd like to mention one which is particularly relevant also in Northern Ireland. There are, I believe, approximately 16,000 unconsented septic tanks here, and there are many thousands more across our countryside without, with the right, position, right permissions, but no longer near the required standards. Indeed, it was previously found that 12% of phosphate pollution reaching Loch Erne comes from septic tanks. As the issue paper says, there, are, there are, was a general consensus that more work is required to better understand and reduce the impact of pollution from septic tanks, as it is a much larger problem than is currently thought. The Republic of Ireland introduced a replacement scheme for older or defective tanks in 2012, so I would ask the Minister for an update on what work is going on in the background to address the problem here in Northern Ireland. I want to finish by also joining with all our members, and I'm only on the committee five weeks, but to pay tribute to our chair, Anna Lowe, and to our vice chair, Pam Cameron, and also to our clerk, Kira. So it's, it's an all woman set up today on this International Women's Day. So I want to pay tribute to them for the work that they have done 
in the five weeks that I have witnessed it. So, well done. I want to finish by commending this report and all those involved in looking into the serious and important issue. We all have a duty of care to prevent pollution and must do everything that is reasonably practicable to do so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now call the Minister of the Environment, Mr. Mark Durkin, to respond to the debate. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'd first of all like to thank Anna Lowe and her colleagues on the Environment Committee for the work that they've done in relation to water quality and examining the topic of river pollution. I'd also like to acknowledge the success, and a few members have alluded to it, of the stakeholder event that was held at Oxford Island last month. By all accounts, and by all accounts again today, it was a very positive and productive day, and I'm delighted to be able to respond to a number of issues that were raised at that event. Our water environment is of key importance to us all. Our economy, our health, our enjoyment of the environment depends on the way that we maintain our rivers, lakes, groundwaters and coastal waters. Mr McGuinness, who was described as both young and a city slicker today, quite rightly pointed out that the biggest driver for improvement of the aquatic environment was the introduction of the Water Framework Directive, or WFD, which was adopted in 2000 by all member states of the EU and established in law here in 2003. This legislation introduced a new legislative imperative together with new mechanisms for the protection and improvement of all aspects of the water environment, including rivers, lakes, groundwaters, estuaries, coastal waters and locks. So, the Water Framework Directive has a very clear link to rivers and to river water quality. The directive requires plans to be put in place covering a six-year period and to be updated every six years. In Northern Ireland, each river basin management plan includes a programme of measures, and this includes a range of coordinated actions to be implemented by contributing departments here and public agencies. However, we cannot expect dramatic improvements in surface and groundwater quality overnight. The WFD recognises that early and sustained action and stable long-term planning is needed due to the natural time lags involved in making water quality and ecological improvements. Such time lags can be frustrating, I know, for stakeholders and the public, but particularly after a pollution event, it takes time for ecosystems to recover, and any such recovery is often a long-term process. In December 2009, my department published the first river basin management plans as required by the WFD. The second cycle management plans were published in December past. We have made progress in recent years. The Northern Ireland figures for the status of our water bodies show that 37 per cent currently meet good ecological status as required under the directive. This is considerably better than in England, comparable to Wales, but still well behind Scotland, who rated 65 per cent. The real extent of our progress, however, is somewhat masked due to the one-out, all-out rule for classification of water bodies as required by the directive, which is particularly stringent. Each water body can fail for not meeting the standard in just one of up to 40 elements. For individual elements in Northern Ireland, over 80 per cent are now achieving good status out of an almost 5,000 assessments. In many cases, it is only one element which leads to failure. This situation occurs in nearly 20 per cent of our water bodies overall. Therefore, 56 per cent of water bodies are either at good status or require improvements in relation to only one element in order to reach good status. In some cases, signs of improvement are delayed due to the natural recovery times of aquatic animals and plants. In others, it may be factors outside the catchment. For example, in cases where fish populations are poor, but all other water quality and biology assessments are good, further investigations have already been initiated with fisheries bodies in DECAL, the Locks Agency and DARD. An example of this is in the Moyola catchment, where an interagency catchment project has been set up by NIEA, Rivers Agency, 
Decal and Dard Countryside Management Branch to investigate common issues within the catchment related to fisheries, WFD and flood risk management. The aim will be to develop a multi-agency data map so that common issues and activities can be coordinated to address a range of problems affecting water quality, habitat and flow regimes. As part of the development of the river basin management plans, the main pressures in failing water bodies have been identified. For Northern Ireland, around 68 per cent of failures are due to diffuse agricultural pollution, and 33 per cent are due to point source discharges from wastewater treatment works, industry, sewage networks, urban runoff and other non-sewer discharges. NIEA regulates point sources under the Water Order 1999 and the Pollution Prevention and Control Industrial Emissions Regulations 2013, setting, condi setting conditions and standards within consents and permits, which take account of the risk to the receiving water. These standards are set to ensure that there is no deterioration in the receiving waterway. The NIEA applies a robust regulatory approach to ensure that the requirements of consents and permits are met. If the non-compliance is minor, we will concentrate on fixing the problem to prevent further impacts to the water body. In more serious cases, however, the NIEA will move to gather the evidence which can and has led to prosecution. Diffuse agricultural pollution remains the most significant pressure affecting our water bodies, leading to failures of good status across the north. Although levels of phosphorus have declined significantly in the last 20 to 30 years, the rate of change has now reduced and may actually be reversing. DOE and DARD are already working closely together to address nutrient levels. A joint workshop took place on the 5th of November last year, which initiated discussions with the farming sector on how to reduce phosphorus inputs to the environment from animal feed. My department works closely with stakeholders and local groups at catchment level to identify sources of pollution and to tackle them. Examples of successful partnership working include the Water Catchment Partnership Project on the River Derg. Northern Ireland Water, DARD, Ulster Farmers Union and NIEA have worked together to promote and raise awareness of best practice when using pesticides in gardens or on farms in catchments supplying drinking water. This has been achieved through events and farm and home visits and the project is ongoing. Other projects involve working with anglers and other water users through Riverfly Partnerships, a community-led initiative to monitor river stretches to identify pollution. Those involved are trained in simple river monitoring techniques using aquatic invertebrates, which can be checked on a regular basis. Any significant changes can be quickly identified and investigated. Groups are active on the Enler, the Lagan, the Six Mile Water, Fohan, the Derg and the Roe Rivers. Other measures within the second cycle river basin management plans include the extension of a number of key programmes from the first cycle, including a revised nitrates action programme, ongoing investment in water infrastructure and a new environmental farming scheme under the Rural Development Programme. All these have been developed to protect water bodies and help deliver good status. Full implementation of the second cycle river basin management plans could see up to 70 per cent of our water bodies at that good status by 2021. All of these measures and initiatives are dependent on funding. An economic assessment has been undertaken. Some of this funding will be sourced from Europe through Interreg and the Rural Development Programme contributions, and most of the remaining costs will be funded primarily through Northern Ireland Water's Infrastructure Improvement Programme. The remaining costs relating to measures for ongoing and new departmental activities will have to be taken forward and funded by the implementing departments. However, we are all acutely aware 
that securing funding is difficult in the current financial climate, and furthermore, delivering the targets of the Water Framework Directive has become even more challenging given reduced staffing levels and the need to deal with ongoing reactive workloads. Before I finish, I need to touch on responding to, issue, to incidents of water pollution and indeed on enforcement action. I understand that the Committee's interest was prompted by a number of high-profile fish kills that occurred during 2015 and the years before that. These incidents impacted on the Enler River, the Ballymartin River, the Three Mile Water, the Glenavy River. Following my discussions with anglers and with stakeholders, I asked my officials to draft a fish kill protocol. My idea was to have a document setting out how we would communicate better with stakeholders as well as setting a standard methodology for the investigation of such incidents. I'm delighted by the level of engagement that has sh been shown by stakeholders in the development of the protocol and indeed their willingness to get involved in assisting us to investigate such incidents. I believe that there is the potential to go further and I know that my officials will continue to build constructive and positive relationships with stakeholders. At the end of the day, we all have a common interest in improving water quality and by working together collaboratively, we can put our efforts into preventing and catching those who pollute our waters. Effective enforcement is an important tool in tackling pollution. I am aware that there was a lot of discussion, and even today, speakers have mentioned the levels of fines at the, at the committee's stakeholder event. The levels of fines is imposed by courts. And that is the responsibility of the judiciary, and rightly so. However, I would make the observation that dealing with polluters rigorously in court would greatly assist my officials when they are trying to encourage industry to put measures in place to prevent pollution. To me, this is much more positive and effective than having to take individuals to court, which does not actually result in any environmental improvement. Court should be seen as the ultimate deterrent, and I would be happy to see a reduction in cases going to court, because the better financial choice for businesses is to invest in pollution prevention, rather than risk a very high fine in court, along with the associated bad publicity and potential clean-up costs. The standard scale and statutory maximum levels of fines set out in legislation is perhaps something that should be considered further during the next mandate. Uh, Mr McAldoff had raised a couple of specific uh, questions with regards to the River Stewley. was quite right. I do not have that uh, detail uh, to hand, however, I can furnish him with the details re required in the coming days. And his concerns are well as echoing of the concerns of residents in and around the river at Owen Killew uh, are, are, is something that I, I have heard before. I can assure the member and indeed at those concerned residents that any potential impact of any potential development in that area will, uh, or, or on the pearl mussels will be taken into consideration. Our water environment and the quality of our rivers is something that each and every one of us needs to take responsibility for. The best way to protect and improve the environment is through everyone being actively involved. I remain totally committed to working in partnership with local stakeholders, and during my time as Minister, I have worked hard to develop initiatives to encourage partnership working. I think I've been more of a fisher of men than a fisherman. I have very much enjoyed meeting with a wide range of stakeholders, hearing their views and ensuring that we capture the enthusiasm and drive that exists within the voluntary and government sectors to make a difference and improve this very important resource that we should never take for granted.
call Mrs Pam Cameron to conclude and wind up the debate on behalf of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Prin Principal Deputy Speaker. And I welcome the opportunity to conclude on this evening's debate on behalf of the Committee of the Environment. I'd like to thank everyone for contributing to the debate. There is no doubt that the subject of river pollution generates passionate views, and we are all united in the need for a more coordinated and holistic approach to tackle this problem. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, before I begin to sum up, I would like to re reiterate the need for the Executive to work together to implement measures to address all of the issues that have been discussed here this evening. The restructure of our government departments must serve as an opportunity for a cross-departmental approach to the management of our fresh water environment. Evidence was presented to the Committee that the various agencies responsible for aspects of our water environment should deliver better joined-up approaches. It is evident from the work of the committee that managing pollution is a complex system and cannot be delivered successfully by piecemeal solutions. The committee also recognised the role that stakeholders must play in addressing this issue. That means that all of us, we all benefit from and enjoy what our rivers and lakes have to offer. It is all of our responsibilities to report incidents of pollution and be careful not to pollute our waters. However, government must lead by example. The committee recognises that more work is required in the following areas. Implementing the measures in the river basin management plans in, in a timely manner. Understanding the opportunities from cross-departmental -depart working. Understanding effective measures in pollution prevention, for example, greater understanding of schemes to replace septic, septic tanks and sustainable drainage systems. Improving education and raising awareness locally and nationally developing partnership approaches to improve mon monitoring efforts and uh, testing new technologies, and also liaising with the Department of Justice to discuss how fines and penalties can be used to act as a deterrent and to reflect the severity of the crime. There are many innovative approaches that the Executive can adopt to further reduce pollution, and the Committee urges the Minister to engage with his Executive colleagues to establish and agree how better this might be achieved. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I refer to the members' uh, contributions. Um, we had Paul Gervin who spoke, and he talked about how this had come on the back of a number of pollution incidents in rivers that feed into the Loch Ness. He talked about uh, the opportunity to move forward with a joined-up approach to tackling pollution, and he said that there was a wealth of experience in the voluntary community, which we should all capitalise on. That there are a number of sewage treatment works that cannot handle the day-to-day task that they were created for and he had concerns relating to the inconsistencies in prosecution and those involved in a number of instances um, that they were not uh, treated differently and he also suggested a three strike rule. Um, Mr Brian McElduff said that there should be a fuller look uh, taken at the river pollution by a new committee. Um, he raised fish kills in his own local river stool. He asked uh, how many of these could be attributed to government agencies. And then we had Mr. Uh, Young Alden McGuinness, um, who said a lot of work had been done in the river pollution, um, that a lot of good work had been done in relation to river pollution that could be attributed to the uh, European Union. He talked about how the new Department of Agriculture and Environment. Um, the, possibilities of what they can do. I, he talked about around 68% of failures are due to agricultural pollution. Um, he proposed that an independent environment agency would be a good idea and he praised the committee um, event, which he didn't make it to, um, in February. And he also stated too that fines and enforcement that courts um, need to be take the pollution incidents more seriously and that the polluters need to pay, and I think it's a very important point. Uh, Mr. Alistair Patterson spoke, and he talked about that there were rivers which are very polluted, uh, that there were too many pollution incidents. Um, he referred to certain rivers repeatedly polluted by single offenders, and we all know some of those. Uh, he said that most pollution incidents are avoidable, that more work is required to understand and tackle pollution from sept septic tanks, and we haven't touched on that already too. Uh, he asked that the Minister to address what work is being done to address this and he commended the, the work of the report. So just um, so 
just to move on, um, um, some comments from myself. Um, environmental issues are, are often on the periphery of what we deem to be important in the matters discussed in this House. And whilst we focus on other essential topics, the importance of our environment is all too often something which falls between the cracks, and we know that. One such environmental issue which I have spoken at, at length over the course of this mandate, particularly during my tenure on the Environment Committee, has been the problem of river pollution. Due to time res restraints, it became clear that we would be unable to hold a full inquiry into the matter, but I was pleased that the committee agreed to give greater consideration to this area and attempt to come to some workable solution in the time-limited frame. The stakeholder event that was held on the 18th of February and sought to hear views on issues including monitoring, pollution causes and, most importantly, fines and penalties. By now, you will be aware of the work I have done within my own constituency of South Antrim, which has suffered the greatest instance of fish kills in Northern Ireland. During the last five years, as we have heard, 20 incidents have occurred, six of these happening in 2015 alone. These incidents have devastating effects on local angling groups. Many have worked tirelessly to restock the river following previous pollution incidents and ensure the environment is conducive to aquatic life. Given that the Glenavy, Six Mile, Three Mile Water rivers are important tributaries to Loch Ness, the pollution um, of the river systems has huge implications for the whole of Northern Ireland. As we all know, Loch Ness is a vastly significant ecosystem and the wider implications of fish kills and pollution incidents cannot be underestimated. Loch Ness is a significant breeding and spawning ground for such fish such as pollen, Atlantic salmon, European eels, and is home to kingfishers, sand martens, otters, bats, amongst um, other species of flora and fauna. Pollution on the scale seen in South Antrim is sure to affect the delicate environmental balance of the area for many months or even years to come. It is clear to me that the key to helping prevent these environmental crimes is to impose swift and stringent deterrence to offenders. As departments restructure in the next mandate, we must ensure that there is greater inter interdepartmental working, particularly with justice, to make sure the appropriate penalties are put in place and efficiently enforced. It is also vital that we are quickly identifying the causes of pollution, whether from agricultural, industrial or individual sources. Whilst businesses are required to keep inventories of harmful chemicals, it is a possible solution that we require businesses to report their chemical inventory to the NIEA. This may assist in speeding up the identification of both the source and the composition of pollution incidents. In conclusion, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I would like to thank everyone for their contributions this evening. I hope that the incoming committee builds on the preliminary work undertaken by this committee in relation to this important topic. I urge the Minister to engage with officials, I know he has done, and, and the stakeholders to address um, other measures that can be taken to tackle this issue. Whilst much good work is already being done, we cannot be complacent. To do, um, to do so would risk the vital ecosystems of our rivers and lakes. So just uh, on finishing, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I want to wish um, Old McGuinness in particular and uh, our Chair Anna Lowe all the best, um, in case I don't get another opportunity to do so, um, in their retirement from this House. Um, and um, We've worked very well, I think, as a committee, and uh, a lot of that is down to the terrific um, committee staff that we have had, and I know we've um, certainly burdened them uh, more than their fair share, and certainly in particular during the last lot of months of this mandate. So I think they have to be commended for the terrific work that they have done in this time. Um, and uh, my last point would be just to thank to the minister and the departmental officials who have worked with us on, on, all, on all the issues and have been most helpful and engaging throughout. And that is um, to be recognised and appreciated. And most importantly, to um, thank the stakeholders who, who contributed so well to um, our review on river pollution. Thank you. Members, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it.